Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good morning and good evening to everyone. Okay. Thanks for joining today. Okay. Salesforce Commerce Cloud Online Training Demo from SV Texas. Our trainer is Priya. Okay. She so has expert in Commerce Cloud. She so will be taking further training session and everything. Okay. Priya, are you in the call? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Priya. Priya, actually, okay, so today is the Salesforce Commerce Cloud demo. Okay, please take for the session. Okay. Let me plan for the regular batches. Today is the just for demo. Demo is the free of cost. The regular batch we are planning to start from Wednesday onwards. Okay. Yeah. Priya, okay. We will be in mute. You can take for the session. Thanks, Priya. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Priya. And today I'll be taking an SFCC demo. So today I'll just give you an overview on e-commerce and what is Salesforce Commerce Cloud and what are the different, uh, what is the architecture of SFCC? And I'll... So firstly, I would like to understand what is the basic understanding of e-commerce from any of you and i would also like this to be a interactive session as a if a person or just me if i'll be speaking all the time it would not be very interactive and most of you all might not find it interesting so i would be asking a lot of questions so like, can you, any one of you explain me what is e-commerce according to your understanding? Hi Priya, good evening. My name is Suresh. Yeah, hi Suresh. Uh, as the way uh, the name suggests right, e-commerce is nothing but uh, the uh, commercial activities, what we, what we do on a particular uh, uh, cloud environment where we purchase, sell, exchange. Yes. So. E-commerce is nothing but trade in a digital or online fashion, right? So, uh, in uh, so there are various way uh, of e-commerce, right? Now we have B two B, B two C, marketplace, and all this. So, do you all know what is marketplace or like earlier there was brick and mortars like mostly uh, as you can see that we had a uh, shop of shop and people used to go buy a product from that there and it was a normal brick and mortar way but due to revolution and like pandemic and all so people has switched to e-commerce because uh, there are law it easily a person can uh, there is your shop is open or your commerce is open 24 hours like you can sit at your home and you're at night and you know that business is still running also apart from that uh, you can trade all over the world right like i'm in india but my e-commerce business can be done or managed from us as well i can export my day, my uh, goods and all in and services in us so that is why e-commerce was more prominent in near future and it's the future of commerce. In So coming to various type of e-commerce, like we have B2B, B2C, B2B2C, marketplace and all. So as the name suggests, B2B is business to business. So in this business to business, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, we have a manufacturer, a wholesaler that is selling to other wholesaler items. And one business is selling this item to another business for it to sell it to another business or consumer directly. So this is called B2B. Uh, anyone have any doubt till now? Like you all can just unmute yourself and, you know, ask a question if you all have any doubts. Am I clear? Uh, 
I'll take that as a yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now B two C is business to consumer, so like a a normal store, e-commerce store, let like a Levi's site. So in that case, we customers we scroll to the site, we add a product, and then we do a regular checkout. And here the business is selling direct to its customer, or the target is customers. Okay. And then we have B two B two C, the business to business and business to consumer both are taking place, and at the end marketplace. So anyone has an idea on what is marketplace? Priya, yeah, marketplace Any... is an environment or in a place where the. We can buy, sell everything. Like India Mart is a marketplace where we can buy uh, uh, things, and uh, even this, what to say, uh, the uh, uh, Geo Mart is also in a marketplace where uh, a person can enroll himself, uh, sell his product. He can buy product from there. Everything. Okay. Any e-commerce site that you know is a marketplace. India Mart in the marketplace, uh, Priya. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, you know, yeah. So in that case, various third-party sellers they come and then they sell their products online, right? Like eBay. Amazon. Yes, Amazon. Yeah. So this is a marketplace. Now, uh, I would uh, like to explain basic terminology that we use in SFCC. Now, uh, what uh, you all know what is like a Salesforce Commerce Cloud, right? Or you all don't have any idea on what is SFCC as well? No idea, Priya. Okay, so Salesforce Commerce Cloud, as the name suggests, Commerce Cloud, it's a tool that would help you develop or create an e-commerce store in a short duration of time. Uh, you all have heard about Shopify, WooCommerce, Magento. Uh, Anyone? Yes. yes. Yeah, so much like those tools, SFCC is another platform provided by Salesforce. It was first previously formerly known as Demandware and it was acquired by Salesforce in 2016. And since then it has, its name has been, you know, changed to Salesforce Commerce Cloud. So it's a platform to build your site in a short duration of time. Now, when a customer or a business selects a site or a platform to build a site, there are various, uh, you know, uh, reasons or stakes, uh, factors that help them choose the right platform for their site, okay? So Salesforce is a SaaS, so software as a service, and it's also in cloud, so you can scale accordingly. Also, there are various other reasons. So that's why, uh, you know, uh, various features which helps you to select Salesforce Commerce Cloud and then different according to your needs and requirement, obviously. So much like any other platform, Salesforce Commerce Cloud helps you to build your site. So what happens out here is, Salesforce Commerce Cloud will give you some its base cartridge, some of its, you know, which has some predefined codes already and a basic site built that we call as RefArc site or as site genesis site. Okay. And whatever we do, so that's a basic site. So what we'll do is we'll use the site as a reference and we'll start customizing on top of that site. 
to build it in a short span of time. Whatever features we want to add, we'll add and whatever UI customization and everything we want to do, we'll do on top of that. Um, am I clear till now? Uh, Priya, uh, I mean, uh, like the uh, Salesforce, right? I mean, do we have also have two parts in this, like admin part and the development part of Salesforce Commerce Cloud? Or is there only one uh, development yes. service? No, no, no. There are administration and merchandising work as well. So basically here, more than administration, what we call is as merchandising in Salesforce Commerce Cloud. So various, if you... Uh, in all the e-commerce site, mostly every e-commerce site, a part of, we have products, catalogs, and then some contents like, you know, banners and everything. Apart from that, we have promotions, coupons, and all this thing in every e-commerce site, right? Like, these are part and parcel of, like, every uh, e-commerce site because they need to give promotions and all these banners are there to make your site more attractive and then you have products in your e-commerce side, the data, the items, images that will show to the customer. So to configure everything on all these items, we have merchandisers in SFCC. We call them merchandisers. So what you say is that, I mean, uh, the uh, admin part is different and the merchandising is the coding part, right? The developer part is the normal technology. The coding part is different, that is development, but all these activities that administrating and merchandising activities, they come under ad merchandising activities. So like these, are only uh, uh, these are all click and uh, kind of a configuration tools, right? Or uh, any yeah, coding so, is required for this? No, so these are uh, configuration work. Configuration without coding or? Uh, without coding. Without okay. coding. So uh, SFCC has its sandbox, okay? To, uh, to fit product data, promotion data, all this information, what we have, what we call sandbox. So all the activities that you do around sandbox, we call that as merchandising activities. Mm. Yeah. Hi Priya, this is Shaila John. Uh, so uh, as I told that uh, it's all like a configuration, uh, admin and merchandising, right? Uh, uh, it could be promotions, uh, product data or anything. So if we need to do any uh, business functionality like customizations, right? So, uh, so do we have to do uh, in the configurations level or if there, is there any coding customization? Uh, so it's a mix of both, right? Like uh, supposedly your, uh, your client has a requirement to add a new feature, okay? So in that case, what you'll be doing is there will be some part that you can do, like there can be some, it can be a three possibilities can be there. Like uh, if it's just an enable thing or disable thing that you can do through, uh, you know, just configuration, you'll do that else, you know, you want to keep a mixture of both where your client also has some, uh, you know, handling data or, you know, they have some control over there, like wh whether they can switch on and off or something like that, then you'll code it as well as you'll keep it in the administrative task, or you can make it as wholly code development, code development as well. So that depends upon your requirement. But yeah, there can be mixture of both as well as whole code and configuration as well. Okay. But mostly if a big uh, feature is there, like example that they want to add something like that. So it requires a coding as well. Like most of the feature development, they require coding as well. Or more of a customization. Yeah, Priya. So two things. Uh, first is, do we need any uh, license to learn SFCC? You don't need any license to learn SFCC. 
I'm not sure. Like, what do you mean by license? As in, like. Okay. No, like Commerce Cloud will be exposed to the developer org that we have, means uh, the free dev org that we get. Sorry, to I'm get not the, sure. No, to get the hands on, do we need any like uh, uh, in the free dev org, which uh, the any developer uh, registered in the Salesforce? So uh, will this? Uh, Commerce Cloud will be exposed, or do we need to enable something to expose Commerce Cloud objects? Okay, so the demand for sandbox is quite different from other uh, Salesforce sandbox. Then, how do you plan that uh, the person who will enroll for this uh, will get the hands on? Uh, that will be handled by Sure. That actually you yeah, have to be request to your company. So, um, see, the, basically we do give complete training in real time. But the thing is, okay, challenge wise, we will not provide any R. But each and every session will be recording. We will share the recording. If you want to do practice, you have to be raise a request in your company. You have to be get a R. You know, the Salesforce Commerce Cloud R is not a free of cost. Okay, so it's not a open source. Yeah. It will be a, some different environment. We have to be install package, make sure the particular org have more than one GB space. A lot of things are there. Usually you have to be right request to your company. But the Priya will give complete training in real time occasionally. So he will show you the org and everything, how it works and everything. But the practice wise, you have to be get the org by your own through your company. Assembly. Okay, the second, uh, my second question is like you will be teaching on uh, Visual Force or you will be teaching on the uh, new one, Lightning? Yeah, free Customization. So, uh, Sachin, right? No, Saurabh. Okay, Saurabh. So, what you're talking about is Visual Force and Lightning is related to B2B. That is business to business commerce. That is not demand well. Okay. Okay. So in this, in it CC? B2C, it's B2C, business to consumer, demand versus for commerce cloud. So customization we are doing in? So we have, so it's just a second, give me a minute. So in B2C, we, uh, we don't have visual lightning or this thing. We have what we call, uh, so it's similar to JavaScript, okay? The demand with framework is very similar to JavaScript. So, and they are actually shifting on that Node.js Express thing. So when I show you the codes, you'll understand basically so if you all have a knowledge on javascript or you'll know javascript it will be very easy for you to understand the code okay fine so yeah. priya the prerequisite for this is uh, we should a person should have a coding background or uh, non coding guys can also uh, get into it oh if you have good logical uh, skills obviously non coding guys can also learn that, but provided they need to code, right? They should have an app to code to coding in future if they want to pursue Salesforce Commerce Cloud. And this course covers all the models, right? Like B2B, B2C, marketplace. No, right? this covers. Uh, Demandware is only B2C. B2C. So this covers, covers B2C. Okay. B2B is an entirely different domain. So it's an e-commerce domain, but it's an entirely different technology, orgs, and everything. Both are completely unrelated. Okay. So we will not be covering all the aspects of the commerce cloud, right? Only we will be covering only B2C. B2B is not covered in this. Uh, 
a salesforce commerce cloud is b2c like demand where is b2c only like oh okay it's only b2c fine and uh, what is b2 b2b then oh lightning and visual force what we call as cloud craze like okay. visual force one so the technology over there no, is no. not javascript is it yeah, it's Hello? it's like apex and lightning okay so you don't need apex lightning knowledge for this demand where yeah, no. yeah. we don't need we don't need apex okay. lightning Hello? knowledge in this okay got it Hello. Mm, any other questions? Oh, do we have any data load activity here? Sorry, which activity? Like, uh, uh, suppose we have any application having huge thousands of products, flags. So how how here it is handled, like uh, through a data load or any batch files? Okay. Uh, so. Yeah. So basically, in that case, what we do is, uh, basically, we have an intra uh, integration with PIM, no. So, or we don't when we have lots of product data. So we have integration with PIM, or you can uh, import data as run jobs. That is okay. also another. So all this are covered, right? Uh, any everyone has idea on what is PIM? Sorry, can you come on again? Uh, PIM product information management. Oh, no. So it's basically like a solution to uh, that holds large number of data, like information, your product information, catalog information, and all. And you know, uh, it's a place. So we can, what SFCC does is it, it's integrate with PIM, and then it retrieves its product data and all from PIM, like using real time information. Okay. Any idea why Salesforce choose for like uh, for B two B and B two C to be different tools altogether? Why? What is the difference? Where does difference come? Uh, because, mean, because both are different. Uh, because uh, both are different platforms, right? Like, uh, um, I. No, that I understand. But what I'm saying is, why they kept it separate? Like, why is different the the development part? So, is that like because they want B2C to be used by more people and make it easy for people? Is it like that way, or I mean, what is the in, intention it's behind? It's basically because uh, the com. the business because of business requirement i believe uh, because uh, uh, firstly both of b2c was acquired by priya your voice is breaking different different organizations back then hello your voice is cracking priya hello am i audible just a second <laughs> Is it any better? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's better. Yeah. So, uh, basically, uh, uh, what I was saying, yeah, B two B commerce that is cloud craze, and B two C that is demand web. Those were two different organizations that were acquired by Salesforce. Okay. So they had then uh, revolutionized or customized those. Uh, products of cloud craze and demand where and you know and changed it firstly that and mostly why i believe that is because of business needs like i as a business if i my objective is to do a b2c business then uh, i would not be interested or i'll not mix both b2b and b2c together right 
I would like both of my sides to be different. Mm -hmm. So that I can uh, track my, uh, you know, B2B, B2C data so, differently. So what happens the pricing if, would be different. Yeah, what happens if there is a unique uh, use case like where um, a company is dealing with both businesses and customers, so B2B, B2C kind of together. What happens in that case then? Uh, the the supposer is not a recommended platform to right. You cannot do both through. So basically, you have to you have to you have to buy separately, like two licenses, right? Oh no, that time you won't use demandware, right? You will do, use different tool that is supporting B two B B two C. Okay, okay. Any idea what's the licensing cost? Like, what's the price? Um, Per user for this tool? Uh, no idea. Okay. It depends okay. upon your requirement, how many sandbox you need, and every other factors as well. Mm -hmm. So, is there a limit on how many products you can have in on your e-commerce site? I mean, how how is it? How what what are the things that matter here? Or is it data? Data, you know, the amount of data you can store. Yeah. So actually, uh, we do have quota violations in SFCC where, you know, uh, when the limit of data stored is more than, you know, the recommended, you there is data violation or quota violation. So in that case, you know, to ex enhance your quota violation or ex you need to, you know, buy, purchase. So that time you need to purchase ex through an extra cost from SFCC. Like you need to pay some minimal price to add more data and all. So okay. basically you add more servers in your cloud. Mm -hmm. What will be the duration for whole of the course? Uh, this is something that you can answer. In the complete course, it will take 35 hours total. Mm -hmm. The completion of the total demand work course, it will take 35 hours. Uh, Sorry. Someone was saying something I could not understand. Can you? Sorry. Uh, no, there be a provided for practicing? Yeah, as we mentioned. As we mentioned, we will not provide any particular R, but while going training, we'll be take our sandbox, we will give complete training in real time. Each and every session will be recorded. We will send you the recording each device. Okay, for practice purpose, you have to be raised request from your company. Or if you know someone, you have to be get R from them. But originally, from as we text out, we will not provide any particular R as of now. In future, if we can get, we will definitely stay to you guys. For now, there is no ARC from us also, but we do provide the complete training in our sandbox that we cannot share outside. Please take care, Priya. Any other, any further questions? So, so what is the front end stack and back end stack for B2C? Okay, so the front end we basically use jQuery, and back end is basically like there are two, uh, you know, it's basically um, similar to JavaScript. Demand way is similar to JavaScript. 
uh, you can see it's JavaScript. You said uh, front end is jQuery? Yeah. The back end is based on Node? Uh, is it Node.js? Similar, like, uh, not Node.js. It's, it's going towards that, like, but uh, it's similar to JavaScript. You can say back in JavaScript. Many vanilla JavaScript? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other question? Hey, can you introduce yourself? Okay. My name is Priya, and I have eight years of experience in overall experience and five years of experience in demand way. So currently, I'm working on an organization as a demand way lead developer. So you expose both an admin and uh, dev end, right? Yeah. The sense, I, the, the yes. payment and the dev end. Yeah. Yeah. I have experience on both administration as well as development. So are there any certifications for the B2C? Yeah, I just I want have... to get to know the knowledge. Yes, I am a certified B2C developer. And I'm saying, is there any certifications available for B2C, not yours? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Excellent. Uh, hi, uh, Priya. Uh, just wanted to know, will you be covering SFRA as well? Yeah, so basically, since SFRA is uh, the version that is used right now, so Correct. Yeah. Salesforce Commerce Cloud, they recommend us to use or whatever new sites that are developed are on SFRA. So we'll be working on SFRA prominently. Okay. Any further questions? When, when might the school start? Right. Uh, that can be answered by... Yeah, we'll be starting this course from Wednesday. Day after okay. tomorrow. Okay. We will send you all the necessary details to you. So is this B2C, uh, once the checkout happens, uh, the invoice generation and payments uh, will be handled by itself or some other? Hello? So, so once, you know, uh, you go to the checkout page, there are various integrations. Okay. It, it's not built in, right? It's not at this moment. No, it's not built in. You have an integration with PayPal or your Apple Pay or various payment gateway like ATN, Sarna. So all this payment integration of first data. So we have link cartridges and you know plugins for all these things. So we use those cartridges and we develop the code, or we can create own custom cartridge as well if such. Uh, out of the box cartridge or link cartridge is not available and we integrate this with these third parties. So for the product and price uh, imports, do we have any specific rules, something like that? To import the products and prices. Uh, yeah. 
uh, is there any built in components or uh, when it is third party okay tool? so if you have that file xml file okay you can import the products easily but if you don't have the xml file or you know uh, some datas are available in the excel file you can write or create jobs to read the xml file and uh, read the excel file excel x file or you know whatever data that is stored in your server or by th some third party you can read that and convert it into xml file or you can integrate with product information management as i said to import the data so regularly thank you Uh, will there be order management as well? Order management, yes. Um, order management is there in SFCC, but uh, let's see how the time permits and we'll work around on order management as well. But then again, Salesforce uh, order management is an integration with various vendors. Like you can use Salesforce OMS or other like fluent commerce to integrate OMS with Salesforce Commerce Cloud. Order management is not out of the box if you are think if your question was that you have to integrate with other various third party vendors. Okay. Sharat, right? So it's not. Sorry, uh, your voice is inaudible. Like, not, it's very feeble. Can you please repeat? So, uh, order management is not inbuilt with uh, demand where as of now, right? Yeah, it's not out of box. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, in this course, you will be. Uh, uh, I mean, handling end to end, right? Uh, from uh, uh, catalog management till uh, order delivery, or how is it? So, for order delivery and all, what we do is in SFCC, we integrate with various third party vendors, like I say, like Salesforce OMS or, you know, uh, Fluent Commerce. So, once the order is created, so based on your requirement, Either you make a call real time when you're placing an order to the OMS and send them the product data that this product ID is, you know, ordered and you check the inventory and you send them the data about the customer so that they can deliver that item or fulfill the item, you can say, or you uh, run a job after every five or 10 minutes that collects all the data or the order data. And then they run, they collect all the order data and they send the data to OMS. So according to your requirement, uh, you choose a slide of path for your thing. And then uh, order management is done. That is basic out of the box according to the data that are given to OMS and you know maybe some attributes that you need to do in your orders. You customize on top of that according to your business requirement. Okay, thank you. Uh, Priya, is SFCC is uh, or native to Salesforce or a different platform? Sorry. Mm. Is it native to Salesforce or a different platform? Yeah, it's native to Salesforce, right? Okay. So um, whatever the governor limits we have in Salesforce, so will, will it be applied to um, SFCC as well? Uh, Salesforce is basically not a tool or platform, right? It's a company organization and it has various tools or platforms under it, like Salesforce Servix Cloud, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, Salesforce Commerce Cloud, Salesforce Digital Cloud, and all these items. So I'm not sure what you mean by 
different rules. Okay. Uh, Mahesh, can you just, uh, you know, repeat your question? Like I'm not... No, we have uh, uh, governor limits in Salesforce, right? So whatever we implemented in uh, SFCC, uh, will those governor limits be applied to applied here as well? Uh, corner limit as an example, can you give me governor an limits? Sorry. Okay. No, no, the, it will be different from those. I think it's what we're asking is, um, will there be uh, limits on like API? You can, you know, have daily basis. Um, I think what his question is related to platform. Facebook is a platform itself also, right? Yes. And, yes. Um, and there are limits we, we have. So basically he's asking, is it also applicable to this product of Salesforce? But I, I yeah, for example, if you have again, more than uh, fifty thousand products in my uh, store, yeah. okay, so uh, I think mean, they will be applicable because it's a multi-tenant right. architecture again, right? It's multi-tenant, so it will be yeah. applicable. But again, yeah, yeah, uh, need to pay additional cost. So you need to pay additional cost, like after some. It, it, it's not about the cost, Priya. It's about uh, uh, the hand and the way of handling. Okay, for example, if I have millions of products in my uh, company, okay, so uh, how uh, SFCC will handle to show all those products on the page, I mean, on the marketplace or on the storefront or wherever. Okay, so in that case, uh, you can either see millions of products we have filled, like I know for a fact in one of my project, there were 10 lakhs of products and we had that many amount of data in our SFCC environment. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that you can do, or you can externally manage by PIM also, like I said. Okay, Priya, thank you. So for managing through PIM, you need integration skills, right? As a yeah. Developer? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Integration so in SSC is quite easy. Uh, how you can say that is it out of box something they provide some solution? Yeah, so you we have link cartridges for most of the vendors, like mostly okay. the you know yeah. So basically you have a implementation guide as well. So you need to follow that guide and Im integrate with SFCC, and then you can customize on top of your according to your requirement. Okay. Um, any other question? Uh, you some, can you some... please share the course content? Yeah. Can you please share the course content? Let me share the course content. Uh, let me know when you all can see my screen. Yeah, we can see. Yeah. 
so basically uh, like i said today we'll do with introduction e-commerce overview and i'll give you an sfcc and mvc model architecture like what are rems in sfcc and what a primary instance group and how our code and data push to in sfcc then uh, we have this as the 18 days topic and what a cartridge directory structure so in like sfcc like i said we have cartridges will give you information about what is web dev that is server and what are the sfcc development process i like a code walkthrough then i'll explain you about what is sfra the architecture the middleware architecture and how are data rendered, ISML rendered, and what is model view and controllers there. Now, what is SFCC controllers? The inheritance overriding, that is, we use replace, extend, append, prepend, all this thing, and how to debug codes in SFCC. Now this is ISML template. What is an ISML template? Or uh, ISML is a rendering template in SFCC. And how how we include other templates in an ISML and all the ISML expressions and how we can use that exp expressions. Now then I'll explain you about what are system objects and custom objects in SFCC is basically the database you can see and what a site preference, site preference basic and all these options like how we process data in this system and custom objects. I'll explain about what is catalog pricing and inventory, how, how can we create catalogs, how can we create price books and inventory and how can we feed product information in that catalog's pricing and inventory. Now we'll work on search and dicing. That is all the sorting rules, searching rules and everything that is related to search. I'll give you a brief overview on what is category detail page, what is product detail page, what is product landing page, and how we, you know, the breadcrumbs and everything, and how we can add data in, create data, how we fed, fed, feed data in PLP, PDP. We'll see about these APIs, different APIs of SFCC, that is custom manage, customer manager, order manager, product manager, catalog manager, and how we can use those. Then we'll walk about one integrations, like how data are sent from SFCC to other third party services, how we get a response from those services, and then how we use some business logic and handle the responses. Then we'll talk about what are the different various customer groups. And we can also talk about customer groups and promotions campaigns on those days then we have shopping cart and checkout i'll explain you about what is basket manager how do we add data in uh, all the shipping data all the billing data in and what is the basic checkout overflow yeah so basically this is the core structure Any doubts? Uh, what is the certification name we have for this uh, B2C? Salesforce B2C oh, developer certificate. Okay. B2C commerce. <laughs> Mm. 
so any of you are working in SFCC in any of your organization? Uh, yes, I'm working. Okay. So you're working in SFRD, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, I did not get what is SFRE? Okay. So in SFCC earlier, there was, uh, so there are multiple version you can see like uh, different types. So earlier we had SGGC that is Site Genesis JavaScript Controller. Okay. So basically that was the previous version and whatever coding and all we used to do, we were doing in that S SGGC format, okay? Sim uh, gradually, gradually, Salesforce had created SFRA. So in this new version, they had a mobile first thing in mind, approach in mind, mobile first approach. So there, and also apart from that, uh, inheritance and middleware functionalities were introduced in a very large extent in SF. Uh, this uh, SFRE and this is the new version and whatever uh, new projects that we develop or you know whatever new website that we develop through SFCC platform we make it in SFRE so that is a version of that is SFRE that is storefront reference architecture okay now now uh -huh. the current version is SFRE yeah so hi Priya. So are you going to provide a um, like R for uh, practice? Uh, uh, no, Sunil, I cannot provide you an R. This is okay. something that a company can help you with. Okay. Uh, so how we are going to practice? Like I mean, and so any platform you suggest? Okay, that I cannot help you with. So okay. if you are. Um, no, that is not something that I can help you since this oh, or can I, this requires cost, okay, an additional cost to purchase okay. sandboxes. Mm -hmm. uh, someone has mentioned what is job opportunity in India and salary range. So the job opportunity is huge. There's a lot of market uh, crunch and there's a lot of opportunity for SFCC developers in India as well as outside India. So there are a lot of opportunities. If you know SFCC, you might know that there is a lot of demand and salary range is, is on the upper side only. I'll say as there's a lot of demand and the resources are less and uh, it depends upon your knowledge as well and the years of experience that you have and all these factors also come into play when you are expecting a salary. So it can be from 10 lakhs uh, for a fresh, it can be six lakhs as well. And on the upper hand, like a uh, experienced guy with four or five years to experience can have salary of 25 to 30 lakhs as well. So, and obviously as more your experience grow, your salary also grow. So who are in India hiring for these roles? I mean, mostly Accenture, companies like Accenture, or there are some- No, no, there are various company like Publicis, CPN, then we have Deloitte. Then we also, apart from this, all this Accenture, Infosys, Wipro that you are saying, Mindray, I'm not talking about those organization, but then we have various PFS Web, Merkle, Tensu, Waltech, all these companies are also there. There are various different companies as well, Pixel Media and all this. In fact, Salesforce itself hires Salesforce Commerce Cloud employees.
or any other questions? Uh, is there any specific material for the course content? Uh, I just showed you a course content, right? So basically, uh, we don't have any material for it. I'll just, show, you know, we'll, we'll have some, I'll just show you through hands-on and all these activities and we'll record the session. There might be some PPTs and all that I need to check or I'll create some PPTs and send to, but there's no material as such. Obviously this uh, recordings will be there for you for future reference. Uh, any other questions? Any further questions? How much we should pay for a complete course? Sorry, I am not. Uh, can you please repeat the charge? Like, what are you saying? How much we should pay for a complete course? How much? Amount, amount. Hours. Can you tip this type what you're saying? I will share you the details that one. Is like you know, asking about course fee. Okay, I will share you the details. Do you want to discuss anything to Priya? <laughs> yeah, as we are planning the regular classes from day for tomorrow. From there on, we will show you the org, okay? how it works and everything. The complete training will be happening in real time. Then do you want to ask anything? We just clarify with Priya. This demo is just like an introduction. Okay, What is a subsum? Okay? What is like okay? a sub-CC and okay, how it works? to clarify your question down if you want anything please discuss with me we will be available for next two to three minutes we'll be ending the session next five minutes Yeah, thanks for your thanks for your time. I guess okay, there is no more further questions. Yeah, th thanks everyone for joining today's demo. Okay, as we are planning to start the regular batches from Wednesday onwards, I will see you the detail. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks for your time. Thank you.